American flying fortresses have cut two great aerial highways through the heart of Hitler's Europe. Huge fleets of heavy bombers now fly from Britain and Italy to land on newly established American bases in the Soviet Union. Here they fly over occupied Yugoslavia, over marshalling yards in Hungary, and over airfields in Romania. targets pounded were all chosen by Red Army commanders. Soviet airmen await the American planes as they wing on to Ukrainian fields. The new two-way service eliminates the long run home when the missions are completed. The first American arrivals are met enthusiastically by their Russian brothers in arms. United States Ambassador Harriman is present as General Eker pins the Legion of Merit on General Permanov in charge of the Russian end of the service. Russian girls have hot food ready and waiting for the American pilots. Nearby, the Americans are shown the devastation wrought by the Nazis before they were flung Berlinward. It was just three years ago that Hitler sealed his doom by the attack on the Soviet Union. The Russians and Americans worked side by side, servicing the big forts and their escorting fighters for the return trip. Barriers of language disappear, and the young Russians and Americans ready more and more tons of bombs for Hitler and his satellites. The Red Army entertains its Western guests with a lively show. The Russian dance band takes the stage, and United Nations unity quickly becomes social as well as military. As the great new Soviet summer offensive bursts into flame on many fronts, the planes are bombed up, ready for the flight westward and another blow at the Nazi war machine. Off the Italian coast, the British Navy carries French troops to the historic island of Elba. General Tassigny is on hand to watch his men embark. These are the same colonial regiments who brought military glory to the French flag by their spectacular breakthrough in Italy. Lying off the coast of Italy, Elba, in German hands, was able to menace Allied sea communications. Its acquisition was an essential part of General Alexander's Italian campaign. German batteries opened fire the moment the French hove into sight, but the resistance was short-lived. Soon the Allies were disembarking, and the conquest of Elba was soon completed. Here are the first censored pictures of Germany's so-called flying bomb. Some have penetrated the defenses of southern England. Many more have been destroyed over the sea. By piecing remains together, Royal Air Force experts learn exactly what the device is and what makes it tick. It is not radio controlled, and once launched, its flight cannot be changed. Of steel construction, the flying bomb is driven by jet propulsion. Into the power unit, fuel is injected under pressure from compressed air bottles. The bomb is kept on a set course by an automatic pilot. Immediately behind the streamlined nose is a one-ton explosive charge. Of defense measures, we can make no reference except to say they are being taken. 
To date, the flying bomb has done nothing to stem Germany's growing defeat. It is fast falling the victim of Spitfires, anti-aircraft guns, and other allied defenses. American victory at Cherbourg has been officially announced. Coordinated British activity in the southeast made possible the rapid drive into the vital deep water port by troops of the United States. Crammed into the city were the elements of three German divisions. They were ordered to fight to the last man, to hold their positions or be shot by their own officers. But the impetus and firepower of the Allied offensive was too much for the beleaguered defenders. Cherbourg is now a liberated city. Allied machines of war had to be brought ashore on beaches, a situation now remedied by the capture of Cherbourg Harbor. The battle-scarred landscape is the price of liberation from Nazi tyranny. A powerful punch is added to the ground strapping by these new rocket-firing typhoons. Their deadly missiles have proved even more effective than dive bombing. The planes propel their charge at terrific speed. The rocket itself has much greater weight and penetrating power than any shell hitherto fired by fighter planes. An automatic camera records the deadly results of the new flying artillery, a wholly new kind of aerial warfare. Factories, marshalling yards, and ferries across the River Seine provide excellent targets. Mitchell bombers also attack rail transport centers. Nazis were left with few facilities to reinforce their Normandy armies. The armed might of America marches on. The forces created since the attack on Pearl Harbor today represent a fighting machine that neither Germany nor Japan can resist. Over the rubble of the battlefield, they drove to their great victory at Cherbourg. They have laid a pattern of conquest no power on earth can destroy. As these pictures were made, 32,000 Nazi prisoners had been taken in the Normandy campaign. This parade of beaten men is but the beginning, the gathering cavalcade of defeat for Nazi Germany. Yeah.